for the second concern you have for your patient. There's ways that you can you have to be flexible in exploring brains. But by default, this is the one that the brains is the most easy for. Do you understand? Let's talk a little bit about the child population and what was involved in that. And some of the uh, earlier uh, publications and descriptions of this is like on and all, all the way back in 1980. Uh, we looked at, in this case, all U.S. children. Again, the same kind of information, medical developmental histories, had to be excluded any kind of early uh, developmental trauma, like having hyper-type illnesses, any lost consciousness, any extreme need. All of these are exclusion criteria. Also, they failed at any school level on a number of areas that they also been measured in terms of achievement scores. And again, I think the estimates are done from the body picture category to uh, get an idea if there was a problem there. In this case, they're excluded with scores under 90. This is from the earlier work about test, retest reliability. I think it was a publication in KL. And this looked at some of the earlier variables, again, just generally speaking, uh, left bundle, left central, etc. And the correlation from hour to hour, week to week, uh, again, scanning six to eight months difference, and then after two and a half years. Now, this is in the child population. So if you notice the correlation coefficients start to go down, particularly when you get out to two and a half years. That's what you'd expect. But there's so much change in brain function that begins to happen in children, that the correlation is you're having eight six going to be different than, say, an uh, eight-and-a-half, nine-year-old. And that's the point I was raising earlier. When you work with childhood populations, this gets to be a lot trickier in terms of what you're thinking about things than with an adult population. You have to be aware that as a child is aging, there are natural changes taking place that you have to be aware of. This is from the Medusa and Peterson database that, again, shows that with the increase in age, the parameters of these frequency bands change in time. This is exactly the point I'm making. For example, at earlier ages, delta and beta are prominent, normal. Alpha and beta is not so much. It doesn't start to shift until about age five or so. And you can see the trend going the other direction. This is an important concept to understand. When you're talking about low 